Let me focus in on these uh, observed expected values a little more. Let me zoom in on that. And we'll see that to the right of that, there are the chi-square values. And at the bottom, in the blackened cell, we have a chi-square value of 8.4174, rounds to 74. That's our chi-square value. That's our observed chi-square. We can also see down here, we see what our degrees of freedom are. Our degrees of freedom are 1. There's a red arrow pointing to that. There's also our critical value at an alpha of 0.05 is 3.841. If we wanted a 0.01 value, we would have used 6.635. And we see our p-value. Now remember, our p-value tells us what the probability of uh, are being wrong if we reject the HO. And in this case, it says our probability of being wrong is just 0 0.0037, which is pretty low. Now, we can tell this thing is significant. We can tell that because our observed value, 8.417, is higher than our critical value of 3.841. So we know we're going to reject HO and say our data is significant. Another way of knowing is to look at our p-value. Here our p-value is 0 0.0037. Well, that's less than 0 0.05. So we're willing to make the bet and reject the HO. So that would be significant at a 0.05. It's even less than a 0.01. So had we used an alpha level of 0.01, this also would have been significant. Let's uh, do our, s our steps, our seven hypothesis testing steps. I always start with step two because I'm a weird uncle thing. So step number two is that alternative hypothesis. What it is that we're trying to show, and we're trying to show that the two categorical variables are dependent or they're related to each other. That is, the presence or absence of infection depends on whether a person was warm or not before surgery. Now let's fill in the opposite of that which is our null hypothesis, which is step one. Step one would be the HO, is the two categorical variables, warm status and wound infection, are independent. Whether or not an infection develops is unrelated to whether that person was warm prior to surgery. Now, these are pretty wordy. Remember, when we did HOs before, we just had the mu of A equals the mu of B. Or we'd have rho equals zero. Pretty simple. These are pretty wordy, but that's one of the disadvantages of the chi-square. Other than that, it's pretty easy. Let's go to step three. Step three is, like always, we just set our alpha, and we set it at 0.05, which is what we normally do. Then we have a rejection rule. We're saying rejection rule, reject HO if chi-square comp is greater than or equal to. Now this is a little different. Before we used to put absolute values around our comp number. But with a chi-square, that doesn't need to go there because in chi-squares, we're squaring everything. If it would have been negative, a negative squared is a positive. If it would have been positive, positive squared is positive. So all chi-squares are positive. We don't have a negative chi-square. So we don't need the absolute value sign. Let's go back to our spreadsheet and see what our chi-square comp, uh, our critical value would have to be. And here our critical value is 3.841. So this is what we put here in step number four. So we put rejection rule, reject HO, if chi-square comp is greater than or equal to 3.841. Step 5, we just put computation and test statistic colon chi-square comp equals. And we can also find what that equals on our spreadsheet. That's in the darkened cell, the black cell. So 8.4174 is what that rounds to. So we'll take that number and put it here, 8.4174. Now, we have to look at our computed value of 8.41 and compare that to our rejection rule. It says reject HO if our chi-square comp, which we now know is 8.4174, is 
is greater than 3.841. Well, 8 is greater than 3. So definitely, our chi-square comp is greater than our critical value. So we do get to reject HO if it's greater, and it is. So step number six, we just say, decision, reject the null hypothesis. This leads us to our conclusion, our, our three-part conclusion. And whether or not we reject it, step seven always starts the same way. It says conclusion at an alpha level of 0.05 comma. Now comes our statement. And here it was significant. So we'll say at an alpha level of 0.05, warming patients prior to surgery significantly decreases the likelihood of wound infection. That's pretty interesting. So now we just add our, our statistical string. Now the first thing we tell in our statistical string is what kind of statistic we did. And we did a chi-square. That's followed by a parenthesis. Now in the past it's been followed by a parenthesis that has degrees of freedom. And chi-square does the same, has degrees of freedom, but it adds something. It, t it also adds what the number of patients were in the entire study. So let's come back and look at that. We had uh, degrees of freedom were 1. See the red arrow pointing to DF equals 1. And then above that, we have another red arrow, and it's pointing to 281. That's the total number of subjects that were in the study. So here we have chi-square, parenthesis 1, which is our degrees of freedom, comma, n equals 281. Now we have to say what our chi-square value equals, and we can get that from step number 5. We see that our chi-square equals 8.4174. So we'll put that equals 8.4174. Now the next thing that comes is our p-value. We have to go back to our spreadsheet, and there's our p-value. Our p, I have a red arrow pointing to it, equals 0 0.0037. Now, the reason there's a zero, a leading zero, before the decimal is because stat programs usually don't follow APA formula. But as nurses, we need to. So here, we'll leave the zero off that's before the decimal. And we'll just write P equals point zero zero three seven, And that is the last of step seven. Now let's look at all seven steps together. What we see is our HO and our, our H1, our null hypothesis, and our alternative hypothesis are both pretty wordy. That's kind of a characteristic of chi square. Step three is the way it always has been. We just say what our alpha equals. Our rejection rule is pretty much what it's been before, but we don't need the absolute value sign. So we say reject HO if chi-square comp is greater than or equal to. Step number five, we just put what our test statistic was, same as always. Six, same as always, we just say reject HO, or we say fail to reject. In this case, we rejected HO. Step seven, we have our three-step conclusion. Again, the first step is just to say what the alpha is. Second step is to say what our conclusion is in words. And our third step is to have the statistical string. The statistical string differs in two ways here. One way is that besides just having the degrees of freedom in parentheses, we now have to add what our number of subjects were. The other is here I didn't say whether it's one-tailed or two-tailed. Most people don't when it's a chi-square. But there is a, uh, if you get really tight at the statistics, there is a one-tailed versus two-tailed kind of chi-square. So you might see that, but I'm not adding it here. And that does it for the chi-square. I hope you remember how to say chi. Remember, it's chi as in chi-row. Thank you.